Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Shelby Jo Long, Senior Vice President of the Strategic Advisor Board and CEO of Business Dynamics. And I love getting into the podcast and talking to entrepreneurs that have created a business out of their genius. And today is no exception. We, our guest, Lisa Young, MD Coaching, is going to tell us all about her journey of how she developed her own business and stepped into her genius to really have this great grounding in her entrepreneurship journey. So Lisa, welcome to the podcast. Excited to Hi, have you. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Why don't we start with just tell us about you and tell us about your business and then the conversation will flow from there. Sure, of course. So my story is maybe a little unusual <laughs> and atypical when people hear it, they're usually like, really? Um, and so my story, the short version is that basically, well, I'm a first generation Chinese Im immigrant. I learned very quickly, work hard, push harder, achieve, do, and I did. So I succeeded and I achieved many different things, including the first to go to college, then accepted early into medical school, one of the top in the nation, as well as then becoming a family physician, primary care doctor, and serving as a medical director in the Bronx during the pandemic. And Quite an accomplishment. And you're so young too. That's, that's yes. an incredible accomplishment. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. And all along this journey of the career path, right, of doing and achieving and pushing and striving, there was a period of time in residency when essentially I was hit with a set of totally unexpected life circumstances. And I don't know if anybody has experienced that before, where you have this plan and mine was laid out for over a decade, right? Uh, yeah. This plan really laid out. And then all of a sudden, everything felt like it was falling apart, including I was diagnosed with an incredibly rare medical condition that didn't have a known cure in the medical world. Wow. And essentially, I, instead of really taking the time off to take care of myself, I just tried to push harder, stretch myself thinner, fit everything in, right? How many of us do that, right? Because Yeah, we especially your, your career woman, you have to do all the things, you have to prove, you have to be there. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Uh, with the health stress on top of that, that's incredible. Mm, right, so suddenly I was trying to do it all, being a patient, also training to be a doctor and doing all these different things, not taking time off or slowing down, just pushing harder, cutting down on sleep, cutting down all these things, and essentially prioritize everything and everyone else first for so long that I, <laughs> one day I found myself completely depleted. Wow, geez. Physically could not get out of bed. Yeah. Oh, and smart. that, thank you. That in that moment, it really was, I mean, I could not, I felt like such a failure in every aspect of my life. And I could not believe me, but I have a degree in clinical psychology too, and I'm a doctor and right. I'm supposed to take care of other people. And all of a sudden I'm in bed, totally depressed, totally burned out. How, how could I, how did I get here? Right. And so that really on the outside, I was achieving lots of success. And really it was that journey that has led me to create my business here. That it was that journey, that moment, even though it was so incredibly hard, it was that moment that was the turning point in my life because really I had one of two choices. I could totally give up and just be like, you know what, I give up on life. This is, this is it. And I was close to that, right? <laughs> and the other option was, well, maybe there's something else out there, some other way of living that I haven't learned from my family, from my culture, from societal standards and expectations. Sure. And so essentially, I went into a super deep dive, researching, learning everything I could about personal development and fulfillment and healing yourself from within and, and, and learned so many things that I didn't learn Sure. In, in my traditional training, right? Like healing myself with all sorts of different modalities, getting really deep to the core of the issue and essentially got to the point of being so healed, so fulfilled, feeling much more alive than I ever have in my life. And I just realized I meant for more. 
Absolutely. Oh, that's such a powerful story. And I, I'm not trying to cut you off. I just want to piece together some of the themes that I see that, that I'm really resonating with. And I'm sure many piece, many people in our audience would resonate with too, that we spend and, and my journey it is similar that, you know, you're trained in a profession, you're in a profession, you're in the silo, if you will, you operate here, you climb the ladders of success, you do all the things, but then it's, then, then you reach a point where you're like, maybe I want something else, but I really don't know what that is. I want something more fulfilling. I want to I want to achieve for other people and also have that balance. And I think there's there's some really interesting the I believe that those themes resonate with quite a few people because there's a we invest so much of ourselves into building that career and to building that reputation in that career that we maybe ignore even our own needs or our family's needs and our relationship needs. And those things are, all of those themes are, are I'm sure resonate with a lot of our listeners, particularly entrepreneurs, you know, but that, because in entrepreneurship, you throw yourself into your, into your career. And then sometimes we ignore the things on the outside of that. But in your case, it sounds like taking that deep dive was something that was was fulfilling and it was a journey and that in a similar way for me too, that yes, the entrepreneurship journey is up and down and there's, it's not all static and it's, there's lots of changes, but even that is fulfilling. So it sounds right to that. Is that, yeah. Can you talk more about that a little bit? Well, I feel like it's such a common theme, like you pointed out, many people listening, I'm sure can relate to it because a lot of it is sort of what we pick up and learn as what we should be doing, right? Right, Based on society standards. This is how you achieve success. You push hard, you grind harder, right? And these, these, are, these external measures are what gonna determine whether or not you're successful. And that sort of subconsciously like, well, if I'm successful, that must mean I'll be happy and fulfilled. But those two are not the same things, right? And I feel like that's why it's so sad, but we hear so many highly successful people, even celebrities that end up committing suicide and people don't understand. It's because we've gotten so good at achieving, but we then lose sight of what's really important in terms of who we are and what's important to us and taking care of ourselves first and foremost. And so that was a huge turning point for me in terms of, it was my rock bottom, right? And I could not believe I was there and think, I'm so thankful that I found a way to figure it out that there is another way. And I healed myself on a really deep level to then where, even though I was serving I really loved my job as a family physician, as a medical director, working on the Bronx, working in the Bronx, especially in the front lines of the pandemic, that I really helped a lot of people. And yet I kept having this voice and this feeling within me, like there's something else out there for me where I truly believe I will help even more people in an even more deeply life-changing, transformative way than I can within the confines of how conventional medicine is being practiced. And so that's how I then left my position as a medical director to start my own business, become an entrepreneur, which is not anything I ever thought I would be doing. That was a part of the life plan, right? Right. And so that I could then help people in an integrative way, in a holistic way, where I bring in my medical expertise, the scientific background and training I have, as well as my degree in clinical psychology, with also alternative modalities that are maybe less understood, more esoteric, more spiritual, energetic, and to bring those two worlds together. Absolutely. It's really magical to see how deeply it can really change someone's lives. Yeah, going through that journey yourself and and I, I commend you because you, you took a, a big step. That's a, that's a step way out of a comfort zone that you built for yourself and this genius area where you're respected and you have your degree and you have your position and you've climbed up the ladder, but then taking that step outside of that, there's a lot of people that would go back to that. And 
taking a step outside of that and jumping into the world of entrepreneurship, which is a journey in itself. You know, you have the journey of the career ladder and the fall, and then now you're transitioning that into an entrepreneurship journey. Both of those journeys can be extremely powerful for people. So, and your experience gives you such a amazing background for your coaching. So that's amazing. Yeah. I can thank you for that. Thank you. It's so, it, honestly, it's so, I loved what I was doing as a doctor and in, in stepping out of the box to now become an entrepreneur and essentially craft my unique way of helping people, whether it's my one-on-one clients or people that I lead through workshops or companies and organizations that hire me to come in to help with managing stress and burnout so that their staff, their leaders can perform even better and get better results without burning out. Sure. It just, it's honestly so much fun. And I, it's not easy being an entrepreneur, right? And I, I you know, there are the <laughs> ups and downs and it's so worth it for me because now I feel totally aligned with who I am and the journey, the ups and downs are worth it because I feel more alive, more passionate and really call to do what I am doing now. And so that's amazing. That sounds like I, this is not a plug for me, but I just published my book called I see your genius. And it sounds like you have really, uh, what I talk about is like when you're truly operating in your genius zone, genius zone, you're integrating all of your backgrounds and experiences. And that's how you interpret the world. And that's how you move forward. And that's how you influence other people. And it sounds like you are completely operating in your genius and providing that transformative experience for other people. I think that's, that's incredible. So. Yeah. Thank you. It really is. I, for anyone that's listening, <laughs> I feel like I, it's brave and it's vulnerable to try to step into your genius. Like you're talking about because often our genius, I believe, each, we each and every one of us has a very unique flavor of genius. And often it may be out of the box. It may be something that you never have heard of before or doing something different. And it really, it's been quite a journey for me to be able to step into that and own it and find faith and certainty within myself, even though there may be uncertainty outside myself to actually keep going and trust and believe in myself, because it's not a path that has been that as far as I know, that has been taken exactly the way that I feel called to take it. I haven't seen, there's no playbook for this, right? No, it's the, you're, you're on the creator side. Now you get to create it and, and, and lead that journey for other people. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Talk a little bit more about that entrepreneurship journey. I imagine many of our listeners are either in the journey or they're thinking about getting into the entrepreneurship space. What were some of the biggest challenges that you overcame? Hmm. Hmm. (laughs) For me, that you've learned. Yes, they kind of are synonymous. I feel like one of the biggest ones that I hear a lot also for fellow entrepreneurs that are honestly taking the leap of faith to go down this journey, right, of entrepreneurship is self-doubt and questioning yourself. And then on top of that, there could be potential doubt or questioning from people outside of you too, right? For, For people who in my world and my family and culture don't understand what I'm doing. And like, why would right. you ever, you, you like most people dream to be a doctor and you're not only that, you're a medical director and you're doing, what, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Is what I hear. And, and it's also the self-doubt or the questioning that comes up in your mind. Can I really do this? Right. Is this going to work? The imposter syndrome. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. And so I would say, I imagine most of us experience that, especially I'm throughout the journey, no matter how successful we are, actually. And to be able to recognize that that's one of the voices in our minds that we might have learned from and absorbed from other people growing up, but also it's our mind. In my workshops, for example, I talk a lot about the physiology behind all of these things, which is really fun for people to understand. Our mind basically 
is create our brain, or especially the primitive brain, is created to protect us. And so the mind can come up with all sorts of reasons and excuses to try to keep you safe so that you don't do the thing that they don't, that is brand new, that is uncomfortable outside of the comfort zone, right? And for me, there's doubt and questioning, even though I've been able to help so many people and achieved a lot of success already, those voices are still there. And to be able to then hear them, acknowledge that they're there, and bring yourself back into your body and then feel, feel what feels most aligned to you, feel what the truth is within you. That's what's helps me overcome the self-doubt because it's not about necessarily getting rid of it entirely because it'll pop up every once in a while. It's just part of human nature. And it's really about finding that almost stillness or peace and calm within you where you the truth you can feel it and it resonates in your body whereas the chatter in your mind it's often very noisy and not grounded ah that's uh that's good advice to think about because i think i i would imagine most entrepreneurs go through that gosh and there's just so much this conversation just helps me (laughs) discover there's so much synergy between what both of us do. So we'll have to explore that a little bit further, but that's, yes. So tell it, tell me about this upcoming workshop you have. You have this new, this workshop coming up. Yes. Thank you. So I have, I've been running a few workshops and it's been a lot of fun because I love the one-on-one coaching that I do. Right. And my clients that I coach one-on-one, we go so incredibly deep and typically they're people that have achieved really highly are super successful in many ways and yet find themselves somewhat depleted and kind of lost that sense of fulfillment and are they come to me looking for what you know what is missing and you it's really fun to work with them and help them basically reignite their passion and have an even greater impact and just feel more like themselves And I was doing that in the beginning of my journey and focusing solely on that. And the reason why I started holding workshops is because I want to be able to reach more people, right? My mission is to heal the world of chronic stress, depression, and burnout so that everyone can be their best selves, live their best lives, and have an even greater impact in the world. And I realize I can't do that necessarily one person at a time. I I want to be able to reach more people and have... Yeah. Yeah. And so now I've been holding workshops and it's a stress relief workshop, right? Because in order to even find our fulfillment and passion, we have to first be able to better manage our states. And so many of us nowadays are so stressed out and it's not your typical stress relief workshop because my focus here is the five mistakes that even successful and really especially successful people, the five mistakes that even successful people make that create even more stress and even more problems. And all of these are mistakes that I've made. All of these are mistakes. Every time I hold the workshop, like everybody, oh, yep, I can relate to that one. And so I help people just like little shifts, little ways of here are the five mistakes. And if you are making these mistakes, what are the tiny little shifts that you can make that can prevent you from creating more stress and problems. And I go through my 4A framework to really shift people from stress to um, feeling totally at peace and things like that. And so it's been really great. It's been so fun to see people's breakthroughs and ahas and people message me afterwards. So I'll give you the link um, and a code for the group in the in for the show notes. But um, we have a few, I have a couple coming up in February and then in March. So the next one is Saturday, February 11th. Great. Well, we'll be sure to get that in the, in the show notes and all that. Where can people find you if they're curious about your offer program? Uh, Well, the, my website is lisayoungmd.com. So young is spelled Y-E-U-N-D dot Y-E-U-N-G. And the workshop is just lisayoungmd.com forward slash stress workshop. And you can always find me on LinkedIn too and uh, follow me there as well. I still need to friend you on LinkedIn. I haven't done that. <laughs> <laughs> but I will do that. And I'll make sure the LinkedIn and your and every and your um, website is in the notes so people can find you when, when they want to relieve their stress. Well, Lisa, mm-hmm. it was a treat talking to you today. today. 
What, uh, what piece of advice can you leave our budding entrepreneurs for how to relieve their stress and to be more fulfilled in their journey? I would say, give yourself permission to pause. Pause every once in a while and just check in. Pause and check in to see how you're feeling and whether you're feeling, if, if you're feeling stressed, then you can implement some of the tools I'll teach you at the workshop and pause and check in to see if what you're doing, what you're working on is aligned with where you want to go and aligned with your bigger picture missions and goals. I, I feel like one of the things that happens in entrepreneurship, it's so easy to go down all these rabbit holes that then we get stuck, but it's actually not helping us achieve what we really want. And it can end up being busy work, right? So don't confuse busyness for accomplishment and making progress towards your goal. And so I, I want to keep it simple. Everything I teach is super simple so that people can implement it. Just pause, pause periodically just to check in how you're doing, what you need. And also if what you're doing right now is helping you further towards your goals of wherever you want to go. Sometimes it's the simplest advice that is the best advice. So I look forward to learning more about you and what you offer and your programs and your workshops. There's, uh, we're going to have some discussion about some future synergy and what we do and the clients that we work with because uh, there's, there's a lot of potential there. But <laughs> awesome. Lisa, I'm so glad you joined us in the, on the podcast today and let us know about your business and your vision. And you have huge ambition and I wish you all the luck with your business. Mm, so. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. And to our listeners, I look forward to the next interview when I introduce another genius entrepreneur that has created a business out of their genius to inspire you to think about your genius in a different way. We'll see you next time.